Interesting fun fact, like before the movie started, like there was this person doing trivia and they were like saying, did you know that all the smiles are not altered in CGI in any way, which I haven't done any research to see if that's true, but can you guys tell me, could I be in Smile 3 if they were to do one? Let me know. I'm sure that was like the ugliest thing everyone's ever seen. Let's get into this. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Thanks for getting through my cringy intro. Today, we're going to be discussing Smile 2. About Sky Riley, who's about to embark on a world tour, and she's a global pop sensation. But after beginning experiencing increasingly terrifying and inexplicable events, overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and the pressures of fame, Sky is forced to face her past. Now, this is directed and written by Parker Finn, who also wrote and directed the original Smile film, which, just for people who don't know, I thought that movie was going to be absolutely god awful none of the trailers impressed me it kind of just looked like truth or dare which if you remember that horror movie that movie was not good at all and then i watched it and it actually really got under my skin there's certain things in that film that i don't think fully work story-wise but like the scares they were there so when they announced that they were making a smile to, I got pretty interested right off the bat then you say it's Naomi scott she's playing this global pop sensation and it's going to be a little bit bigger than the first one. All of these things piqued my interest. You already piqued my interest with the first film. So now solidify it and sell it in the second movie. And I'm here to tell you, while I liked Smile 2 and I enjoyed it, I'm a little disappointed in it at the same time. I left the movie wanting a little bit more from it. Even though it kind of like checks off all the boxes it didn't check off the massive box that I wanted it to be, and that is bigger and better than the first one. It might be bigger in certain of types of scaling, but it just wasn't better than the first one. And I think it disappointed in certain avenues that I'm actually kind of surprised by some of the early reactions hearing how hyped people were from this film. But I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So make sure to leave your thoughts down there. Hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, without further ado, let's dive into my pros because that's the number one thing I love about film appreciation. And we want to discuss that first. So number one thing, I think the best part about this movie is hands down Naomi Scott. I think she's just one of those actresses that doesn't get enough roles still. Like, she's always fantastic in every single thing she shows up in. And I think Smile 2 is no different. In fact, this actually might be top two performances for me personally for her. And I think her performance in here is absolutely incredible. She plays this hypertension just absolutely scared and psychologically damaged person so well and she does have a lot of PTSD filling in from her from her past and it's really interesting to see how that kind of becomes a villain of itself other than this entity and I like how they kind of play with both of those cycles and again dealing with the character and diving into her more to make us care about her story and I can say for the most part that I was really sold on her story in the same vein and I thought she was fantastic in here again the psychological nature of this film is stronger than the first. The first one really banked on that, but it also really, it worked because of the jump scares involved with that. This one, yes, it still has jump scares, but really much more deals in with the psychological nature of how you never know what sky this character is going to see or feel or where she's going to go next. And it always feels like the entity had like a new trick up its sleeve. And I like that it played around more in that. One of those people that typically like psychological stuff more. And I was happy to see that this film went into that vein with it. Specifically within some of the twists and turns that we'll talk a little bit more about in my mixed aspects. But I'm appreciative of what Parker Finn tried to do with this film. I, this, I think the rest of the cast is good. But for the most part, this is based on the back of Naomi Scott. Like, I don't think anyone else really much is too involved with this movie. I think some Kyle Galliner fans might be a little bit disappointed in his role in this movie as well we'll say that he does have one of the best sequences of the entire movie it is an entire one-shot take that i 
absolutely loved. And I think Parker Finn did such an amazing job with that. That also speaks to just the start of this movie. The way that this film kicks off, you're instantly locked into what this film is going to be detailing, be going on inside this movie. And what I really liked about this film is a lot of like, without getting into spoilers, some of the framing and how some of the cinematography really plays into key of that. And this film on a technical level just feels bigger than the last in so many different ways. The cinematography, again, some of the shots, some of the editing, it just always felt like I was latched onto Sky from her point of view. And from, there's this one moment where the, the camera is slowly panning in towards Sky's face on a TV interview. And getting to relay that and see who was like what perspective was that from who was that from once it like kind of clicks for you that oh it was that it really solidifies something that's kind of unnerving which is the thing that i really liked about this movie was that unnerving feeling that's where parker finn needs to be acclaimed as a director i think his direction here is for the most part stronger than the first film but that's where i want to start diving in more into my mixed aspects and my cons so let's jump over to my mixed aspects so first thing with my mixed things i found there are twists and turns throughout here and i think some of them some people might find are clever for me i found to be a tad bit predictable and i think that is actually one of the most disappointing things about the script here is that certain things you're already on edge and kind of trying to figure out what's going to happen with this character and maybe that's why i was just so hypertension and what was going to happen and what was the entity going to do this time but I found the film to overall just be predictable and it's twists and it's turns. And even when it, I th it thought it had me and I was like, oh, they're not going to do this or that, but they are going to go that route. And in the most part, I was able to guess kind of every single turn. And that was kind of a little bit disappointing. Now, again, that might be different for other people. Other people might watch this movie and be like, oh, I did not see those things coming whatsoever. But I'm usually pretty bad at figuring out twists and turns. And if I can figure them out, I imagine a lot of the general audience is also going to figure it out. For me, it's like the only mixed aspect of this film because I like those. I just wish they were a little bit more hidden per se. As for now diving into my actual issues with the movie, it's this is one of those movies that maybe the insane hype of some of the early reactions is what kind of made this film not work as well for me. It did for many others, whereas I liked the first smile. It was a surprising movie. I went into this one just excited off the bat, expecting it to be better. And I walked out just being like, that was fun. It was fine. That, that, that was about it. My issues really rely on a few different territories. One, the jump scares are there. And some of them are very effective, but for the most part, I knew when they were coming. And I hate saying that because I felt like in the first one, some of them were cleverly hidden. And in this one, the way that they were written, while the sequences that usually follow them are very unnerving, I think unnerving is like a really key word, and psychologically damaging, the, the, the start of them never latched me on it never scared me i was just like oh this is creepy to watch and i i wanted a little bit more from that per se from the jump scares as well as i found the pacing of this movie to be pretty uneven uh for two hours and seven minutes there was a point where i looked at my phone and there was still an hour and seven minutes left to go and i a little bit rolled my eyes i was like uh really it feels like we were just about to plateau to where we were and head into the third act and it just didn't really get there, which then relays into my final issue of the movie, which is the third act itself. I like some of the ideas, again, as I mentioned, that resolve from twists and turns that the film takes. But the execution of those ideas, I don't think completely work. Yes, they make sense in the style of the story. I'm not saying that it was a what the fuck problem. Like, this makes no sense. No, it makes sense. But it just felt anticlimactic, where the first film ends in this house and this monster, this creature, you see the design, the design is fucking disgusting, but the practical effects and all of it looked so real and so good that I was very disappointed to see, I mean, not getting into spoilers, but obviously we all know we're going into this and we're going to see this creature again. I didn't like the look of it this time. It didn't look as practical, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is practical, but it looked fake. 
and maybe it was just in the set piece and how it was framed, but I was a little bit disappointed. Again, I like the idea of the ending of this movie and specifically the third act, but it's anticlimactic in the way that it builds up to it, and I just never felt scared from it. Um, there was something they started to do with it, and I was like, okay, I like this, and then it just shifts into, oh, okay. It was very hard to talk about without getting into spoilers. It's just, overall, I walked out a smile to thinking, wow, this is bigger than the first, but not better. And it sucks because I thought this movie was going to be fantastic. It's a solid follow-up that dives more into the psychological aspect of it, but it loses itself in some of the pacing. And there's some really cool sequences, and Scott is so fucking good in this movie. But I found it to be predictable, and honestly, I expected more from this movie. I think that's like, I expected just more. I think if you like the first Smile movie, you're going to like this, but please temper your expectations from those early reactions. I do not think this is one of the best horror films of this year, but it is a solid and entertaining one that I think some people will find enjoyment in. So with all that said, I'm going to give Smile 2 a C+. Plus. As much again, guys, for watching this, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.